Hey guys, Rivers here with some cool tech. And today I want to take a look back at the Minix Neo X8H Android Mini PC. It's got a new firmware update just coming out. Right now it's in beta, but it should be similar to what's finally released over the air. So I'm going to go ahead and install it on this box and uh, we'll take a look and see what's new. Let's go ahead and set it up. First, I'll quickly run you through the firmware update process, and this is using the USB burning tool because this is a beta firmware. The final version will be an over-the-air update, and I'll add links to the tool and the firmware in the description down below. So first, you'll need to plug in the special long micro USB cable that comes with Minix boxes. Next, you'll plug in the power cord, but it won't turn on until you push the power button. Now you'll take a paper clip and put it into that reset button, hold it in there, and then press and hold the power button for about three seconds. Let go of the power button, then let go of the paper clip. At this point, you'll hear a ding and you'll need to install the USB driver as well. Next, you may need to scroll down to make sure that your device is connected and you can see here it's down below. Uh, at first I missed it and I thought it wasn't connecting but it's actually just off the screen slightly. Next, you need to locate your new image file and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And you're gonna make sure the top two check checkboxes are checked and then hit start. The whole process should take about five minutes and be sure not to disconnect it until it's completely done. And now I've loaded up for the first time and it's on the Minix launcher and a lot of the updates are in the settings and also new app compatibility. So over here under display, it looks pretty much the same except for now there's a few different resolutions supported. So I think there's a, a couple extras in here that weren't in here before. Some of the app improvements that I've read about and noticed are Hulu Plus is now working, Showtime Anytime now works, YouTube seems to look better, Netflix seems to look better, and Plex plays back more smoothly now. I'll add a list in the description of apps that are now working. If you're running this firmware and find new apps that now work, let me know in the comments so I can add them. Now over here under advanced, this is where I noticed the most changes. First off, Google TV remote works, and I'll show you that in just a second. That's awesome. But you've also got some more options with the uh, Dolby Digital and some audio settings. And look, at, I even see a USB audio option there. So this is really nice to have these different options available. Okay, now let's take a look at Google TV remote. This is an app that lets you use your smartphone as a remote control for your media player. This firmware adds the option for Google TV Remote and it's the only media player that I know of right now that has that option. And I have to say this totally kicks ass. This is an awesome option and it works really well, especially for mousing and typing. The only problem I've ran into so far is that you can't do pinch to zoom. So like if you want to zoom in on a map, you can't do it with this remote. You can use a mouse though for that. And the voice to text is a little bit hit or miss on here, but the typing works a lot better than using a gyro remote. I think that video playback on some apps has been improved too. Here I have a YouTube video playing, Android on the left, Windows 1080p on the right. I think they both look very similar, and they both look really good. I also did a quick test in XBMC, and I skipped straight to 4K files because 1080p seems to just play a piece of cake on here. And 4K was also playing just nice and liquid smooth the whole time. Uh, no problems at all there. So go and take a look at the video. And the audio is playing back as well. And this is off a, a camera that sometimes the audio doesn't play back in certain programs. So that was a nice bonus too. And here's a quick test of the 1080p 60 frame per second video that I usually do for samples. And played back perfectly smooth, audio playing back. So uh, great video playback on here. I'll add links to the firmware as well as the USB burning tool in the description down below. So again, this is a beta software, so you're going to have to install it manually by connecting it to a computer. If you want to wait a little longer, something very similar should be available on over-the-air updates. So if you're not too comfortable connecting to the computer, you might wait just a little bit longer because I think it's going to be coming right around the corner. But it looks like a nice improvement, uh, nice and stable, and it helps apps become more compatible. If you like this review and want to see more like it, be sure and subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified when I release new videos. Also, uh, hit that little like button down there if you could. That helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching and as always, aloha.